For this project, we're going to start out in Corel Connect, and I'm going to search on the term field. Now, not specifically knowing what we're going to go with yet, I'm going to select some of these photographs. We'll place them down here in our tray and make the decision later. Select that one there. Now, I think also I'll manually navigate to the Photos folder, and I'll have a look inside of the Landscape folder. And this image down here looks like a good field image, so I'll pop that one down there. And also, I think we will need a bird. So I'll go to Objects, and to the Animal Kingdom, and to Birds. And we'll navigate down to the bottom here, and I'm going to select this picture here, and I will pop that there. Well, of all of these images that are here, I do particularly like that one, so I'm going to select that image and open the image in Photo Paint. Selecting the Crop Tool, I'm going to do this by the numbers. 250 millimeters wide, tab 80 millimeters high, and then move the crop area to a suitable location that you want to crop to, double click, and then F4, maximum zoom to object. And now I'm going to select the Rectangle Mask tool and draw a mask around the tree. I want to keep the tree in the middle, and I'm going to actually control C and control V, paste a copy of what was inside of that mask down. And I'll rename that to tree for convenience. Now I don't need the mask anymore, so we'll come up and we'll remove the mask. And then I'm going to turn off the display of the tree and select the background. Now I'll zoom in for a closer look. And what I really want to do is actually remove this tree. And to do that, I'm going to use the Clone tool. With the Clone tool, you can actually adjust the size of your nib using Shift and Drag, then right click to anchor a point you're going to sample color from. And you'll notice how the, the anchor point and the nib move at the same time. So I'm sampling from one area and painting it onto another area. And of course, it's very easy to do using a pen tablet such as I am here. This is my favorite pen tablet, a 12-inch Cintiq. But of course, any tablet will work with photo paint. Now for this next part, I need to create a duplicate of the tree and use that to craft into a shadow. So Control-C and Control-V. And again, I'll rename that to Shadow. And then I'll turn off the display of the other two objects, making sure that the one we want is selected and then up to Image, and I'm going to choose Cutout Lab. First of all, we want to zoom in using the Zoom tool, and then I'll select the Nib tool, and I want to set a size between 10 and 12, and as you can see, I've already set the highlight color to red, because this will show up well against the green tree. And all we have to do is simply begin to draw around the outside of the tree in this case, or the image we want to cut out. And again, using a pen tablet does make this so much easier to do. You're trying to get half of the highlight over the area you want cut, and half over that blue background. So half on the green, half on the blue. Make sure you join the outline to complete the shape so that we can then fill it. So selecting the fill tool, fill the image, and then click preview to see the result. And if you're happy with that, of course, just click OK. Now, I need to turn back on the display of the tree and the background. Now, I'm going to take the image that we've just cut out, stretch it down, and I'm going to use this for a shadow. So, I'm going to come up to Adjust, choose Grayscale, and here... I can lower the contrast created by the yellows and greens, which is very handy as shadows are quite flat and don't actually contain contrasting detail. It's the surface underneath that creates the sense of contrast. And now, selecting the Object Transparency tool, I'm going to choose a flat fill with a value of around 50 to 55. Z on my keyboard and click and drag to zoom in on our new shadow. Now, I'm selecting the Eraser tool here. I'm going to click and drag and reduce the nib size down to quite a small nib size. A transparency between 80 and 90 would be suitable. And really, I'm just erasing those little white areas, which is actually where the sun was coming through the tree originally. Quite easy to do, but it will really help create the right effect. 
Now what I'm doing here is actually smoothing out the edge of the shadow, just really uh, with a very high transparency going around the edge to make sure it's smooth and not too sharp, that it's fading out into the background. Now one thing you may have noticed is that the light on this hill here should be affecting the shadow. So what I'm going to do is actually begin to erase that area um, to make it look a little bit more authentic and realistic. And as you can see, that's looking a lot more realistic, don't you think? Now I'm going to turn off the display of the shadow and the tree and select the background, then come over and select the magic wand tool. I want to make sure I have a tolerance of 10 and I'm in additive mode. When the first mask is created and I click again adding more colours, as you can see the new mask is added to the old one. Now Control c copy to the clipboard, Control v click and we'll rename that to Sky. And now select the background, it's very important. We'll now invert the mask and again Control c Control v click and we'll call that background. Now we don't need that mask anymore so I'll remove the mask and what we're going to do now is add some effects to the sky and to the background. First off I'm going to use the photo effect, it's a brand new filter. Now I'm going to put a gold type colour over the top of the sky because I want it to look a little bit more bleak to create the final effect that we're going for. Now similarly I'll select our grassy background there and I want to apply a photo filter as well to that. And this time we'll apply a type of orange colour because the orange will make the grass look a little bit more old and faded, a little bit dried out. That's what we're looking for. Now for a little housekeeping, let's rearrange and group our objects. First I'll move the shadow to the top and with finger on control, select the tree and the shadow, right click and choose group. Then click on the title and rename that group to tree. And I'll also do the same thing with the sky and the grassy image. Now if you remember, when I started I placed a bird in the connect tray. So let's open connect, turn on the tray and place the bird onto the canvas. Just click and drag. Now all we'll do is resize the bird, place it in what looks like the right position and don't forget right click and apply. Now the last thing I want to do is create some highlights on the grass. So first I'll expand the background group and select the grassy image. And then under the paint tools I'm going to select the effect tool. And as you can see here I've, I've already selected contrast with an amount of 25 set. Now effectively what I'm doing is trying to make my nib go half on the top side of that middle line, half on the bottom. The darker areas will become darker and the lighter areas lighter. And that will add quite the sense of impact, at least where the sun is hitting the image. And I'll just go back and forth a few times. And I think we'll come up the top for final touches and just put a little bit of highlight on the top of the hills. And that's about it. Now this is a subtle effect, so if I undo the effect using Control Z and then redo, you can really see the impact of the effect. So let's go ahead now and we'll save our file as a CPT file and then we'll import the file into CorelDRAW and continue on.